That's all good. Everybody can hear him? Can you guys hear him? Mike Do, what channel should I be on? Hey. Okay, we're good now. Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. Give it up for Jeffrey Hopkins, my co-host. Hey, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Our brand new house band, Scratch and Riff, back here. Yeah. Rob Kilburn on the guitar, DJ Donk is spinning for you when he's not tweeting. So, good deal. We're excited to be here. It's our first show from Liquid Six. Good time. We're really pumped about it. Uh, this is our new home. We'll be here every other week. So, yeah. Watch for us. Look for us on uh, Friday nights. We'll be up on our, uh, what's that called? Website. www.uplate-tv.com. So, yeah, check us out there. Nickelback. This week in Cleveland, uh, they're actually, it's Navy week. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Always good. So uh, support seamen. Definitely. Uh, it's tongue in cheek. Did you get it? Yeah, no, I got it. Okay, got just checking. Just checking. <laughs> Penn State, always in the news with the whole Jerry Sandusky thing. This is kind of like a random new thing going on here. Uh, apparently, they are getting rid of Sweet Caroline for being played at the stadium, which is odd. The rumor has it that uh, they're doing this because of the lyrics, touching you and touching me. <laughs> well, yeah, this is true. They, the rumor is that they're doing it because of that. They're saying, no, it's just an old, outdated song, so we want something else. But it's odd. So if the rumor is true, you've got to think about it, because Sweet Caroline is about some hot chick that Neil Diamond met. And everybody knows Jerry Sandusky only likes little boys. So if you're trying to now then go against girls, I just don't understand the whole thing. So we're going to get rid of Sweet Caroline talking about hot chicks, but it's okay to pack 100,000 people into a stadium you call the Beaver every week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just, I don't know. They just didn't think that one through. Hey, we've got a great show for you guys. Uh, Chad Zumox here from WMMS. A round of applause, as Q said. We have Sierra Renee, who's representing Cleveland in Ohio in Maxim's Hometown Hotties Contest. Give her a round of applause. Our band Scratch and Riff, give them a quick round of applause. All right, all right, all right, all right. Don't, over, all right, all right, don't overdo it. Real quick thing, uh, these guys have practiced, they've only known each other about a week, and they have spent a total of like 87 hours in a recording studio together because they're in love. So, <laughs> up late with Steve Guy, supporting gay marriage when it includes music, just for the record. Uh, at any rate, some of the things in the news right now, the Cleveland Browns, as you know, now have a new owner in Jimmy Haslam, and there have been some changes, so to talk about that, we put our special news correspondent on that, and please welcome Damon Kamen to the show right now. He's going to talk about this for us. Hey. Hey. Word. What it is. Word. Son. <laughs> Word. Theme song from now on. Yeah, the third of September. Hey, it's good to be back, Stephen. Well, yeah, welcome good to be back, back Stephen. <laughs> First of all, that's your new theme song. Good. Good. I look forward to it. All right, Damon. Jimmy Haslam taking over, new owner of the Browns, doing some changes. He also owns the Flying J. So, I mean, come on. What's uh? What well, have you found out? What's going on with this? Yeah, for, first, I I just like to say I was a little embarrassed that I didn't know there was a, a different definition to Flying J. It was a little uh, embarrassing for me. I'm not sure anybody's aware of a different definition of. Oh, you know, a flying J. It's uh, it's getting a getting a handy on an airplane. You know, you don't know a flying J. All right, never mind. Anyway, look, all the hubbub lately has been about uh, you know some apparent changes that have been happening both at the Muni lot and at the stadium. The first thing that happened at the Muni lot is there's a bunch of new signs that say not only no alcohol but no alcohol consumption. 
no open containers and no public intoxication. It looks like the cops are going to be cracking down on tailgating before Browns games this year. Yeah, I did see that. Uh, so what do you think of this? I think it's great. I mean, why would anyone from Cleveland have to drink before they go watch the Browns? They're so good. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's great. Um, but, uh, yeah. What? I, what are you talking No. Everybody drinks before Browns games. Yeah. It's a tradition. Yeah, it's a tradition, sure. Um, I guess, look, if, if you have to drink before you go to the Browns games, do it in the safety and privacy of your own car on the way to the game. It, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot better that way. That's, you know? that's not a good idea at all. Sure it is. No, that's sure. a pretty terrible idea. Okay. Um, well. Uh, <laughs> you could, I mean, you could still drink at this stadium, I suppose. You could drink at the stadium. Have you been to the stadium lately? I because have. Because they have the best $9 Bud Light <laughs> anywhere. I, I don't know what they're putting in it, but it's worth every penny. It's amazing. It's amazing. No, no, Damon, Damon. They're overcharging you. It's the same Bud Light. They just charge you $9 because you okay. can't get it anywhere else. Okay, Stephen, sure. I guess you just don't have the evolved palate that I do. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, look, the, the point is... Uh, what is my point, Stephen? I don't, I don't know where my point is. I don't think you have a point in that because you're clearly proven wrong. All right, let's move no. on. Okay, great. All right, let's talk about the stadium itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they made some changes as far as rules and regulations go in there. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, uh, some people have been kicked out of preseason games because of excessive standing and cheering. Um, so the new owner, Jimmy Haslam, uh, he's cracking down on standing and cheering at the, at the Browns games this yeah, year. Yeah, I did see that. They got kicked out last preseason game. What, yep. uh, what do you think about that? Uh, you know what? I think it's great. Look, this isn't a Magic Johnson movie theater, okay? Uh, save, that, save that for... That's for racist. Else. Did you hear that? No, it's not. I don't know why that's... Said, I don't know. I, he has movie theaters. That's all I said. That's all I said. Oh, they're dope, man. Look, it, uh, they're great. I love that I can't hear all the right, movie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway. So, it's refreshing... It's just observations. It's just observations. Yeah, yeah, whatever you were saying. <laughs> um, look, it's just refreshing that Jimmy Haslam brought this new out-of-town kind of perspective to, to let us know what the real problem is. What is the real problem? We're the real problem. Us, the fans of the Browns, are obviously the real problem. I mean, look, through the miserable years that the Browns have gone through, what's the one constant? The fans show up, they stand and they cheer every single game, every single year. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. And look. I'm on board. I can't wait. I can't wait to break out, break out my coat and tails, wear my monocle, bring my opera glasses, you know, maybe take a nice book and just curl up and enjoy some American no, football no, the way it David, should be. David, no? People should be allowed to stand and cheer. It's football. It's football. It's what people do. They stand and they cheer, Damon. Okay, fair enough. But, I mean, look, I'm a longtime Clevelander, and at the very least, I know that to combat the, the harsh, freezing Cleveland weather, you should just sit motionless for a few hours. That's, that's all. That's what you should do. That's how you should do it. That's, all right, wrap this up. That's ridiculous. Okay, great. Um, well, look, if I just had uh, one thing to say to everybody, uh, don't let them fool you because they're going to test you out there. And uh, they're going to say, you know, rise for the national anthem. Don't do it because you're going to find yourself out on the curb before you even get to bombs bursting in air. And uh, speaking of bombs bursting in air, I got a flight to catch and I got to find out who's going to be giving me a flying J. So you guys have a nice one, all right? David came in, ladies it. and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break, listen to some scratch and riff over here. My bad. We'll be with you in a second. No, your stories are more embarrassing. Stop. Right. Nobody's going to do that here. You might. Stop it. All right. We're moving on. She said she almost had a shot at Shut up. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring our first guest to the stage. Uh, you can hear him every weekday on the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Uh, he also does stand-up comedy in the area. Please welcome huh? Chad Zumach. Yeah. All right. Best night ever. This guy. <laughs> Happy holiday. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Let, let me. 
Scratch and sniff everybody. I don't, what's your name? Scratch. <laughs> you guys are good. Before we get started, Steve, I want to tell you about a little boy with a dream. Um, yeah. I've never, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be on a late night talk show for YouTube in front of 35 people on a Wednesday night at a dance club. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that little boy thing came true tonight, and I thank you so much. You make things come true. It's what I do. Oh, okay. I, you know what? Everybody I ever meet, they always say, oh, you know Chad Zuma? I'm like, yeah. And like, he wears that sweater vest. Is he really a douchebag? What you just proved right there is that you are a sweetheart. Oh, Absolutely. Come on. I wear the sweater vest because I'm trying to prove a point. And that point is I'm going home alone tonight, everybody. <laughs> High five, black guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most non-threatening black guy of all time. Yeah, he... Uh, he tips 20% wherever he goes. <laughs> He looks like a Huxtable. <laughs> he has a story, actually, about the first time you met. He was telling me earlier. Yeah, all right, so Chad, the first time I met you was at Bella W. I was taking your pictures there. You didn't know I was taking your pictures, but... That doesn't sound creepy at all. Nothing creepy about that. Nothing weird. But I was Go right ahead. I was off in the corner taking your pictures, and, <laughs> and right out of the blue, I flashed you, but like with a camera. Wait, what, what, what? This just got weird. Wait, no, I, I, with the camera flash, and instantly you called me out, and you was like, who are you, Carlton from Will Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Like, because I had the whole Huxtable, like, I was wearing this shit, and you were just like, oh, like, who's that Carlton? No, you're a sharp man. You, you got the whole thing going, right? I think so. But That's my jacket. I let him borrow it. <laughs> oh, man, like, wow. Did you let him borrow it or did you steal it? I'm joking. That was a r racial remark. You shouldn't stereotype. I did that in college. I saw a tall black guy. I was like, hey, man, you're tall, black, and athletic. Do you play basketball? And he looked down at me. He's like, you're short, white, and ordinary. Do you work at Giant Eagle? And I was like, yeah. He's like, now I'm more. I'm your boss. I'm like, shit. Let's, I got to quit drinking at work. Let's talk about that, Chad, because, yeah, I mean, you brought that up in stand-up before, and a lot of people who know you know. This is, by the way, Chad CD, Adventures in Argyle. Oh, yeah. You get that. It is a hot... Hit it up on the iTunes. Hot. CD right now. Go ahead. I apologize. No, it's okay. Uh, since I'm actually selling Hall & Oates' as greatest hits after the show. <laughs> He's not selling his CDs. I Hall burned a bunch of copies of Hall & Oates' greatest hits. Hall & Oates sells theirs for $12.99. I'm selling for $9.99. That's a, a hell of a bargain. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but whatever. Go ahead. All right. So let's talk about your jobs. How many... I've been fired? Yeah. I've been fired from 29 jobs. That's a true story. I'm not a very good worker. I'm not very committed to the workplace. I work at Clear Channel, which is an awful corporation. It's a monster. Uh, there's a gentleman who called off my radio station for, because he was having a bad day. And I started thinking to myself, wouldn't it be cool if he called work for having a good day? Like, yeah, I'm not coming to work today. I'm having a great day. I don't want to fuck it up with this work shit. Got it? Pal. That would be good. Right. And I need to apologize, Steve. I, this is your show. I'm hijacking it right now. No, you're doing... You're, you're, you sure? Yeah. Okay, because I'm you're immature. You're my guest. You're my I'm, guest. I'm very immature. Like, I, 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 still play, like, I still play hide and seek. Except now I play with bill collectors. I do that I'm like, count 200, come find me, student loan officer. Canada and Mexico are boundaries. Click and I walk away. Like, I, my new thing now is what I like to do is like, to call up all the Chuck E. Cheese's in the area and make reservations under the name Sandusky. <laughs> you know? I'm like, table for one, please. I'm very immature. That's all right. Well, all right. Let's talk about uh, Alan Cox Show. Okay. Been on for, what, three years? I've been on for probably 32 years. 32 years you've been on the Alan Cox Show in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, 32, this, That's 32 winners, and I survived every one of them. Go ahead. Good for you. Are, yeah. Are you enjoying it? You have a, do you have a favorite moment, I guess, in the last three years? I mean, a lot of people listen to the show every day. You have a lot of interesting callers. Yeah. A lot of interesting interviews, sure. as yeah. we talked about yeah, previously. Yeah. Um, there's got to be, I mean, anything standing out. Not one thing at all. Really? You I didn't even, even meet anybody cool. I don't even remember what I did today, let alone... <laughs> oh my what about, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a favorite moment. Chad. You tell me a favorite moment and I'll see what I... Uh... When I had to uh, kind of defend you in front of people and then I just gave up because... Is your whole life defending me? Is no, I, no, but it comes up. When you first, the first up. thing you said is like, yeah, Chad's a douchebag, I had to defend yeah. this and now you have to defend me. Are you like my 
fucking Mr. Miyagi? You know what? I, tried. I don't understand. I am. Are the Cobra Kai attacking me? Daniel, Daniel son, yes. Okay. For about two weeks straight, you bitch about not going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh yeah. 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 And then what? I went. I went. <laughs> How did that happen? I uh, I I know some people that know some people, and then uh, I snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> And it was awesome. I got to meet my idols. I got to meet the Beastie Boys, my idols. And I had a 20 minute conversation with my favorite Beastie Boy, Ad Rock. I talked to him the whole time. I just talked basketball. And he thought I was like a, a legit person. But he had no idea I was like a super stalker loser. And at the very end, I was like, you're my idol. And I walked away, very embarrassed. So you were to Adam what Radescu Hopkins is to you. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hanging out in a corner, taking Except pictures. That's like, he's iconic in the Rock of Hall of Fame. I'm just some fucking loser that lives in Lakewood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, let's talk a little bit about the adventures in Argyle. Okay. Where did we record it? Uh, I recorded it um, at a NAMBLA event. <laughs> it came out pretty good. And, um, yeah, so uh, you can buy it. It's, uh, it's on iTunes and all the record exchanges in Northeast Ohio. Record exchange, I made the most shitty deal of all time. And that's a true story, that's not a joke, I wish it was. Like, record exchange is like where you turn in CDs that get money. Like, because you need to buy ramen noodles or something. That's it, my exclusive seller. Like, it's not Best Buy, it's not Walmart, it's, not, it's, it's record exchange. It's not, even, it's not even buyback. I'm like that low on the totem pole. But yeah, that's, I recorded it uh, at, at the Funny Stop. The Funny Stop at Cuyahoga Falls. Yeah, it's not that good. I we, gave, love, we love the Funny Stop. I gave that about a 60% effort, but it's selling well. It's in the top 200 on iTunes Comedy, which is pretty sweet. I didn't belong there, but uh, it's, you know, whatever. But so to the se seven people that are watching this, please pick it up. <laughs> you're you're going to love it. They're probably your listeners. You already have the show. Yeah. yeah they're at the CD. Yeah. But I, I love Cleveland. Cleveland's awesome. I love that you're doing this, Steve. Austin, like, I, I love your ambition. You're an ambitious guy. Because Cleveland's a cool place. You can do some cool stuff. I mean, we got a lot of good things going on. We got the casino. We do? We got a casino downtown, like right there. Looks like it doesn't belong. It looks gone. Not even gone, but it looks like. <laughs> but it looks weird. It looks like they put a strip club in a trailer park. It's like. It's just it's or a day spa. It's like Cleveland's biggest bug lamp for homeless people and prostitutes. It just. I love I love the parking garage. It's like all glass, so you can see glass. everybody's car. Yeah. You've not seen that? It's like all windows. You see everybody's parking. So you can there. see the Walk of Shame. That's yeah. why they put that up. Absolutely. Like, oh fuck! I just lost three thousand dollars, my rent money, and my cell phone money. <laughs> I was just in the West Bank of the Flash. You've been there. That's a tourist attraction. I, I have. I actually, you know, we You've ran into there? each other there Lots last of stuff. week. I was just there Monday. Did a show. I was there then, but yeah. Lots of stuff going on. Really? Oh yeah. So much to see. So much to do. It's like a Rockefeller Plaza. I mean, you can see a stand-up show. You can get drunk and raped all in the same block radius. <laughs> it's like the Epcot Center for Cleveland. You know. We got an aquarium. We do. Have you, gone to, have you gone to the aquarium yet? Yeah, they put an aquarium in the flats. <laughs> Next to a bunch of strip clubs. <laughs> have you seen? Who's the location manager on that one? Is he still working? How's he gonna follow that up with a build a bear next to an adult mart? That goes well, right? Yeah. Isn't it great that they have like all these saltwater animals right next to the Cuyahoga River? Yeah. Yeah. Next, next to a bunch of strip clubs, clubs like the place that smell like fish already. <laughs> Too soon. Come on. <laughs> yeah, they're that, they're calling me off right there. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, just because a lot of people want to know, since it is what? called Adventures in Argyle, sweater vests. How did it start? Uh, it was a horrible mis decision. Um, You've never had one of those. What is that? You've never had a horrible decision. Well, it, I, I don't want to tell you how it started, but I'll tell you, sometimes I like to wear it without like, this shirt under it, just by itself. That's probably sexy good to look. the ladies. The ladies like it, I think. Yeah. You could be a Maxim Hometown Hottie contest winner with that, I think. And one time I walked next to a gentleman and I bumped into him and he's like, hey, watch where you're going, queer. I don't know if anyone realized, but I'm a grown ass man. I'm five foot eight, five nine in Doc Martens, okay? So I gotta say something because there's ladies watching. I'm like, oh yeah, queer? You ever think I didn't want to get busted for concealed weapons? And then I skipped away. 
<laughs> and I bought a six pack of Mike's Hard Lemonade. Because <laughs> that's what you do in a sweater vest. You drink Mike's Hard Lemonade. It's a rule. It's a law. It's a law of the sweater vest. Passed by Congress in 1983. Yeah. All right. Well, how about um, let's talk about coming up here. What do you want to talk about, show? Steve? I want to talk about Alan Cox. I want to promote this a little bit. You have uh, the pub crawl. You last the three coming yeah. up in Akron. Yeah. All right, <laughs> throw it out there. Come on, plug it, Chad. You got a pump on you, I love, going on. Chad, you know what I love is you hate. You just are not a fan of the whole plugging when you go. I out. don't care. That's awesome. Whatever. I want to plug the Steve Guy Up Late Show. Is that you what it's called? You gonna plug it? You gonna plug my show on your show? I want to plug my buddy over here, my new black friend. Hi, everybody. I'm black. Hey. hey. You realize, uh, Chad? You just said you want to plug your new black friend. Steve Guy one, Chad zero. Good for you. That was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the pub crawl in downtown Athens. Yeah, it what bars are you Steve, it doesn't matter. Oh, it really nice. doesn't. We're going to some bars. Who gives a shit? This probably won't be uploaded in time. <laughs> it's going to be uploaded in time. <laughs> It'll be there. It'll be uploaded. Let's, Let's plug this. this. Your vodka. Great here. vodka. Great sponsor of us. I like drinking. I drink all I the time. You Usually when I see you, you're drunk. What's that? I usually see you yeah. drunk. Yeah. I just saw you drunk two weeks ago. Where? West Bank of the Flats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. After, after the Jessica Dye fight, which if, if you don't listen to the show, Jessica Dye is a uh, female MMA fighter. I. Uh, I, yeah. Die. I, I want to say, all right. Jessica, I. Is that foreshadowing? It was. I was foreshadowing. Okay. Because she, she killed Chad in uh, his favorite competition, which is arm wrestling women. Yeah, well, yeah, it didn't work out well. I retired because she's very strong. She's an MMA fighter. She's like fourth best in the world. Uh, so she beat me, which is fine. I'll, I'll hang in my head. She on destroyed that. you. I'm not much of a man. She did not just beat you. I'll deal with that. Again. You know, I, like I said, I'm wearing a this sweater. This wasn't like, like what this do you wasn't want like the last arm wrestling match in Over the Top, where it was back and forth. No, you know what I mean. And she had to turn much, her hat backwards. She yeah. dropped you. She, she did, did, and that's fine. She's a lady, and I respect her as a as a woman, <laughs> <laughs> a strong woman at that. Like I'm the biggest guy at my gym. That's because I work out of curves, but don't hate the player. You hate the game. <laughs> All right. So scratch and sniff, everybody. <laughs> so you can listen. You guys to are Chad. good, by the way. You I can really listen do. to Chad every weekday, three to seven. Alan Cox show, one hundred point yeah. seven WMMS. Yeah. Check, check out check my MySpace. <laughs> my friend, sir. Are you on LinkedIn? I'm on LinkedIn. Are you on branch um, out? Are you on branch out on Facebook? I'm on branch, branch out. out. Um, That's a big deal. A big deal. Branch out. Yeah. Oh. Where are you, you going to do stand-up next? Do you even know? Uh, no, not Never. a clue. I don't know where I'm going to do stand-up next. That's good. So make sure you check that out. So definitely buy a CD. Eventually yeah. in Argyle, so you can... Uh, you can check some, you, you can actually check me out. I'm going to be at the, uh, I'm going to be at the Heinen's on Rocky River <laughs> this Saturday. I'm going to be trying to find a fucking parking spot. You've been to the Heinen's on Rocky River? It's like a fucking maze, that parking lot. So I'm going to be looking around the whole time. Uh, I'm actually gonna. Uh, what else am I gonna do? I got a lot. I got a garage sale coming up. You might want to check that out. Where, I live in a high rise. Address. I don't know address. how it's gonna work, but <laughs> high rise in Lakewood. Uh, yeah, high rise in Lakewood. Um, I also uh, am I getting uh, waved off? No, you can. <laughs> where's your Where's your key grip? My key where's your best man? I got. I'm I got this timer. I got a right timer now. on my phone. Tells me if you're you're going. All right. It's all right. All right, let's get this thing going real quick. We're going to end it. Let's get the hot chick up here and close out the show. You're going to stick around for the hot chick? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. It's the 90s. Check them out. What, what's the date of the pub crawl real quick? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Chad's going to dress up like a superhero. I get paid nothing for spandex. it. Spandex. So. That's all you need to know. It Chad Zumach in a sweater vest and spandex. You should just be Quill Man, actually. Quill Man. Out. Thanks. By the way, thanks for taking my picture. Oh, yeah. No problem. I still got it. <laughs> I put your picture away. These guys get more awkward, by the way. Ted Zuma, one more time, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for showing up the liquid. I really See you every day coming up next.
one more time, stretch and rip, everybody. Stretch and rip. All right, our next guest, uh, she's representing Cleveland and Ohio. She's in Maxim Magazine's Hometown Hotties concert. She's a semifinalist as of right now. She's got all sorts of other things going on, so she's going to, uh, I guess, make our set look a little bit better, finally, tonight. Please welcome Sierra Renee, everyone. <laughs> I, I have to throw out real quick, um, since some people might watch this. Hot Carl now in the audience, everyone. So if you're watching, if you're watching, and you hear Hot Carl from time to time, Hi, Carl. That was your cue. I gave you. There he is. Uh, wonderful friend of Mr. Chad Zumar. He's the best. <laughs> oh, but he's better. All right, Sierra, welcome. Hello. Um, tell us a little bit. What's going on, Maxim Magazine? Exactly. Semifinals. Yeah. Yeah. How's that working out for you? It's going. Well, I mean, what's the deal? Where are we at right now in this? Well, I went from 1,200 girls in the United States to 100 girls. And that's the semifinalist. So I think I'm close to getting down to the top 10, which is the finalist. Yeah! yeah. So, Cleveland! <laughs> but is that, is that weird for you? Like, do people recognize you when you go out? Like, Chad wears a sweater vest, so everybody knows who he is. <laughs> but, like, if you go out, isn't that kind of weird? It's like, oh, yeah, I voted for you 1,800 times. <laughs> you know, doesn't it become like a weird element to that? <laughs> kind of. A little bit? Yeah, yeah you know? Um, today I went to the gym and some guy's like, hey, you're my Facebook friend. I've seen you. <laughs> I'm like, you did. <laughs> so you, you just friend anybody. Is that how the modeling game works these days? You're just exactly. like, oh, what's up? Yeah, I need somebody to look at me in a bikini. <laughs> I don't no, care what you... No, that's not how it goes. I mean, why would you accept them otherwise? <laughs> okay, I'm whoa. just saying. I'm just saying. Hi, just Carl. <laughs> <laughs> So like, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, you're how old? I'm 22. 22, all right. Uh, Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 double deuce. Excuse me. Double deuce. You should never say double deuce. Why? Well, it's a whole nother show. Really? We're all, we're all doing it. Really? So, all right, 22, not that far removed from high school. Exactly. Are you like the revenge? Like, were you a dork in high school and guys didn't pay attention to you? Or were you like the prom queen? Everybody knew who you were in high school. I was kind of like the outcast art student type of... Uh, you were a hipster? Yeah, funny kid, go goofy, I guess, silly. Would you, so your type of guy then in dating, do you like guys in skinny jeans? No. Oh, well that's hipster. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not a hipster. <laughs> trying to work it out for you, too. Right, keep, keep trying, buddy. Keep trying. Yeah, don't worry. Maybe we'll have another hot chick on, and maybe she'll be in the skinny jeans and 22-year-olds. I don't know. Uh, all right, so you were talking to me earlier. Um, you have a new kind of energy drink thing going on. I do. You want to throw that out there real quick? I'm a distributor for Verve. It's the number one energy supplement drink in the world, and... It's just coming to Cleveland. I'm a distributor, so everyone, hey. <laughs> um, that's so. Not, yes. That, that's, in no way is that going to get you any less creepy Facebook followers. So, uh, so it's uh, the number one health. It's the first carbonated uh, protein slash energy drink in the world. So, verb. <laughs> that's all right, um, <laughs> since, we're, since, since we're grooming on you here a little bit, uh, I, I have to throw one thing out there. Um, okay. We talked yesterday, Sierra, I had to cut a joke out of my monologue. <laughs> so I had a joke about Lance Armstrong Brad. and Neil Armstrong <laughs> and confusing the two. And I wrote this joke a few days ago and then I went on Twitter and I follow Sierra Renee, Sierra Renee XO on the Twitter. And that's cute, right? XO, hugs and kisses. Hugs and kisses. Yeah. So. It's adorable. It is. Sierra tweets, just found out Lance Armstrong, first man to walk on the moon, died today. Prayers with his family. Are you serious? Don't make that Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I can... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Does it? <laughs> Thank you. It does not matter. I can believe... Lance Armstrong dies. Hey, to her defense, Lance Armstrong will die someday. <laughs> he's, he's half testicle away. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I mean, not... Okay. I'll, you know, some people, sure, maybe you're thinking Lance Armstrong because he was in the news too, so you say Lance instead of Neil. But you were so behind the news that he actually, Neil Armstrong died like days before you even tweeted this. <laughs> you were just wrong on so many <laughs> levels. I was, your life... I'm an admitting person right now, I was wrong. Q, don't you wish you had the life of like a Maxim girl where you could just not pay attention to the news <laughs> and tweet it out days later and be wrong and, and, nobody likes and everybody will still follow you anyway. You look good in a bikini, Redescu. Whatever you say, bikini, who Lance, I don't care, just keep wearing bikini. Yeah, like Chad Zuma, I want to plug you. <laughs> right. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> All right. Not Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. So, all right, last thing before we get you out of here. Um, you were telling me about something new. You got a, a new thing going on maybe in California. So tell everybody about that real quick. What's okay. up? Okay. So I possibly will have a relationship advice TV show starting in October. I'll be giving people relationship advice, makeup, hair, the whole fashion, everything. That'd be good for you. Just yeah, get me cute. One. Just, just get me a relationship. Just, oh, I thought I'd get you makeup. Man. Oh, makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's good. So that you start filming in October or what? Yeah, like, three okay. weeks in October. It'll be, uh, yeah, basically like a Carrie Bradshaw type of character. So. Does it have a name yet? It doesn't. It doesn't have a name yet. Just, I will let you know. Let me know. Will be seven less audience yeah. members than the Steve Guy up late show. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what channel it's going to be on? Uh, one of the lower channels, NBC, ABC, Fox, something like that. One of the lower channels. That sounded so positive. <laughs> one of the lower channels. So it's going to be an internet show just like this and nobody will watch. That's good. Fantastic. Anything else you want to plug before we uh, get you out of here this year? Really? With the eyebrow up? I, uh, you know. I got nothing on the answer. Anyway, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Anything, anything else you want to add to our audience? Um, look for you in the Maxim? Yeah, look for me in Maxim as a top 10 finalist. And you have an article. And, and look out for Scene Magazine. She's uh, going to have an article in there, apparently, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for Maxim. I actually want to start my own magazine. <laughs> my own women's magazine. I want Sierra to be on the cover. I want it to be called Period Magazine. <laughs> but here's the hook. We send it out late to subscribers. Just the fuck with them. <laughs> hey, where's my period? Where's my period? Here <laughs> Really? Seriously? Seriously? I would love it. Okay, cool. I'm a, I have a... Anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sierra Renee, look for her Yay! in the Maxim and Scene Magazine all around. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. We have some stand up comedy from Chris Plant coming Chris your way next. Our final fun that we have going on for you tonight, uh, we are sponsored by Crave. Every, every episode we will have a, uh, a Crave performance. Crave slogan, embrace your passion, and we highlight everybody embracing their passions throughout Northeast Ohio. Our next guest is going to do some stand-up comedy for you. Please welcome Chris Clem, everybody. Thank you, it's amazing to be here tonight. Excellent. I've always wanted to perform at Liquid Six and you made that happen, so I appreciate it. I'm always happy to be in Cleveland. That's where I was born. I love it here. And uh, the Brown season's starting up, so that's cool. I'm getting really excited for it. 
although uh, it's probably going to be like it has been for the last few years, you know. During the season, I'm going to start watching the games, and I'm going to get depressed. I'm going to wish it was back in the good old days. You guys remember the good old days with the Browns? Yeah. Those three years we didn't have a team? <laughs> we were undefeated, man. I recently found out that I went from being slightly out of shape to officially overweight when I got diagnosed with sleep apnea. And my form of sleep apnea is weight induced, which means I have two options. I could lose 35 pounds or I could spend every night hooked up to a $2,000 machine that forces air down my throat. So I got the machine. Cause there's no way I'm giving up beer. I'm gonna use that every night. It's pretty awesome. Sleep apnea is the disease. That means you're so fat, you choke on your own throat while you're sleeping. <laughs> like, <laughs> 10 seconds or more, you have sleep apnea. My favorite superhero, one of them growing up, was Captain America, because he was like America's secret weapon in World War II. He had blonde hair, blue eyes, a square jaw, what better person to teach Hitler there's no such thing as a master race? <laughs> that was a history joke. I know we're at up late with Steve Guy, so chances are you don't have a job or a college education. <laughs> but that wasn't that long ago. Actually, we're on the internet, so chances are you 100% don't have a job. <laughs> or your job sucks. But I love Captain America, and that's what I'm trying to say. I've been on uh, real TV before. Um, I, was, I was on a game show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And I won $100,000. Thank you. All that means is I still want to be a millionaire. So, and, and now I'm here. So I don't have any money left. I spent it, I got married, and uh, went to Wrestlemania twice, so <laughs> all the money's gone. They went with me, so I don't know. I love my wife, though, I really do, um, although a good tip of advice, she started demanding things after I won that money on the show, and that's not cool. Guys, if you're dating a girl and she asks for anything more than $15, She's a gold digger. Take her to Chipotle, let her get guacamole, treat her right. Because that stuff's like $3, and sometimes you get this much, and sometimes it's overflowing, and you just don't know. But I do, I love my wife, and we're married, and my money's gone. So there's nothing else to say about that. Being on Millionaire also sucked because they made a commercial about me, which sounded awesome. And then the commercial said, Meet Chris, a struggling stand-up comic living in his parents' basement. That's not cool, Millionaire. I live upstairs. And I have for 26 years. A lot of people, they give me advice about marriage because they think they know, and uh, most of them don't. But one of the best pieces of advice that was given to me was to spice up your sex life. And um, that's 100% true. So the way we do it now is we incorporate other things that we enjoy. Like I love professional wrestling. So we do it Rowdy Roddy Piper style. And that's where she sits in the room and I come in with a coconut and I bash her in the side of the head and we do it while I'm wearing a kilt. Just when you think you know all the answers, I change the questions on you. <laughs> okay, not a lot of pro wrestling fans here. That's cool. I was just taunt on Nintendo 64. All right, I don't need that. I don't need the band judging me too back here. Fedora man making me feel like a jackass. People want to know, though, they say, how did you know that your wife was the one for you? And I'll tell you why. Last Christmas, she got me custom-made, king-size Spider-Man bedsheets. <laughs> let me tell you that at the time, I was 26 years old and living in the upstairs of my parents' house, which means not only was she cool with me being at rock bottom, 
she was willing to go even deeper. <laughs> and that's a keeper right there. And the moral of that story is it's a year later and we're both living at my parents' house. So <laughs> thank you very much. That's it for me. Chris Glenn, everybody. You're ginormous. I know, I'm too big for this. Yeah, year. I can't. All right. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Uh, real quick, Chris Clem runs a podcast out of Akron. Uh, Pretty Swell Guys is what it's called. PrettySwellGuys.com. Yep. Check it out. They talk about all things pop culture. Sometimes they have special guests. I've been on it a couple times. Yeah. yeah not just because we go to WrestleMania together. <laughs> Give a round of applause for Chris Clem and everybody that came on our show tonight. Sierra Renee, Chad Zubat, uh, Damon Kamen, Jesse Hopkins, the band Scratch and Rip. Thanks so much for watching and joining us here for Uplay with Steve Guy. One more time, great vodka. Thanks so much. And Liquid Sticks here. We'll see you next time.